Hello, I'm Darren. I am Michael. Welcome to <laughs> Welcome to NPR Radio. <laughs> Why don't we start this gem of an episode? <laughs> Sounds like I a don't want to miss. Don't want to miss a, a thing. A minute of no, this. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> I wish I had an excuse. You know, I'm trying to gain all this weight for a movie. There's no movie. If you saw me eat, you would think there were multiple movies. Are they doing a live-action track? This guy's going to be perfect! Welcome to Irritable Dad Syndrome, the perfect podcast for people who have no friends. Here are your hosts, Mike and Darren. Hi, I'm Darren. I'm Mike. Welcome to Irritable Dad Syndrome, Cincinnati's comedy podcast. This is episode 228. I'm in a mood. Yeah, let's I, just get this uh, right okay, out. I'm yeah. in. A, I'm in a mood. Yeah, yeah. We were supposed uh, to record this yesterday, and you. Yeah. The text Mike sent me was, "I've had a weird day. Not a bad day, just a weird day." So I don't even know what. I mean, I have no idea what that means for you because you live a weird life, anyway. It was a weird. As they say, it was a weird day. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to watch X-Files. We get maybe one, maybe two nights a week where we're all in the same house together yeah. for oh. about an hour mm-hmm. where we get to do something. So we all got excited. We all piled down here to watch X-Files. Can't hear a damn thing. Oh. And the interesting thing about X-Files, a lot of people think you don't need to hear it. <laughs> And I, I'm I'm in the camp that wants to. Yeah, I mean, and not just because of the theme song. And it is a sexy. It's a theme cool theme song. song. Yeah, it's really cool. So that blew apart family time, and then I had the Kia problem, and I just one. I just could. I just. But as the kids say, you couldn't even. I couldn't even. Yeah, but you yeah. can now. I can. Even well, now. I'm glad you're here now. Welcome. But I wanted to ask you something before yeah. we get into the thick yeah. of the show, into yeah. the rundown. Yeah. You're a member of fan clubs for several bands. Yeah. I know Rush, uh, you, Tool, you, and the Utes. Yeah, the U2s. Um, yeah. When you joined mm. the fan club, like say on the Facebook, did you have to answer like a trivia question? Sometimes you do, sometimes okay. you don't. Now, I, I don't understand that because yeah. I'm a fan of a group named Sister Hazel. Okay, mm. I love them. I have They're, all their albums. I've seen them live. Longtime listeners will know that that's the band I continually mistake for Molly Hatchet. That's completely night and day different. So Sister Hazel, I decided I'm going to join their fan club on the Facebook. Because okay. you're a fan mm-hmm. and you enjoy community yes, with I, other fans. Yes, and from what I've seen from their community, they're a very decent group of folk. So I decide and I send, a, I, I click the join button. And then I get a thing saying, uh, How do you spell Sister Hazel? <laughs> no, it's like, you'll need to answer these two questions before we can accept you into mm-hmm. the, to the mm-hmm. tribe or whatever. Mm-hmm. So the first question is, what city in the United States does Sister Hazel hail from? To which I couldn't remember. I know it was, I know it's Florida. And so okay. I wrote something, something Florida. Okay. <laughs> Did you write literally something, 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 something fl- Florida? I love that. Then it said, name the five members of the band. Oh, First name only. Yeah. I know their lead singer is Ken Block, but okay. the rest of them I drew a blank. And so I said, uh, Ken Mike, Block and those other guys? I said, uh, Mike Campbell, Howie Epstein, Stan Lynch, <laughs> Ben Mont Tench. These are all members of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, ah, right? Okay. Okay. Within five minutes, they accepted me yeah. into the group. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you can just basically put whatever you want. Yeah. If so, you want to join, be a fan of something on Facebook, which makes me ask, why the question? So a lot of people don't know this, and I didn't uh, at the beginning. And call me what you will, call me an idiot, call mm-hmm. me a, a malcontent, call me maybe. call me penultimate. Mm-hmm. But I just assumed there was one fan club for a band. I think every I, you know I, I you, think you, there should be more than one. Right. Really, you know. Right. There shouldn't be more than one right said Fred fan club. <laughs> no. Or there shouldn't be one period. Well, but you know what I'm saying. It's like the members it's of like, the band, their family. Yeah. Okay. But it's the internet or mm-hmm. interwebs as yeah. the older yeah. folks say. The WW. There's no physical room. Mm-hmm. You can have 10 members, you can have a million members. Why do you need multiple Numbers of members, but I digress. Okay. One of the original U2 groups I was in asked a question, what's, who's boner or something. I forget what it said. I had to leave so many U2 groups because Mm -hmm. they, 
there's some obnoxious ones was out there. They, toxic? they worship yeah. Bono to an uncomfortable degree. Yeah. And I got tired of seeing posts with, isn't he dreamy? And with his <laughs> mullet. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> he hasn't that's, had the mullet since 91. I'm not saying there's no value in that, but that Darren, that's not what I'm here for. Right. 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 And I had to leave a couple of toxic tool groups mm-hmm. until I found one that was just the correct level of toxicity ah. for my taste. Yeah. yeah. And on that one, I did have to answer a question. What was Tool's first album? Which is a trick question because everyone says opiate or undertow, and it was really some... Uh, weird thing that yeah. I found out after I joined the group because I answered the question incorrectly uh-huh. and, and then they let me in, they let which you begs in. the question, what the hell's the point of the question? Why? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm in the Letterman yeah. fan club yeah. and I had to answer two questions. Yeah. I aced those. Yeah. Yeah. Who runs the k Rock America? Well, yeah. it was Muji Burn Sirajul. And, you know, it, yeah, duh, the, come on. Yeah, the Rush group that I'm in, every once in a while I click over just to make sure it exists. <laughs> it's still there. Yeah. It's like 50,000 members, but I swear I'm the only one. <laughs> yeah. At, about once around Thanksgiving and once around March, somebody says, hey, uh, 2112 is pretty cool, yeah? <laughs> And then nobody said for the rest of the year. Anyway, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Uh, Tonight, I'm going to talk about, I went to Texas. Yeah. I went to Dallas, Texas. And uh, the moon is bright late at night. Deep in in the the heart heart of Texas. Texas. Did you Uh, do that on the plane? I did not. Okay. I I definitely didn't do it on the plane, but I wanted to do it. (laughs) Hmm. But there's no pay phones. While I was there, I saw St. Paul and the Broken Bones, and I'm going to give a review of that concert as well. So, Mike, what's up? I visited my favorite record store this past weekend. Uh I visited Plaid Room Records in Loveland, Ohio. All right. We have a fan that's part of their organization that listens to every single episode. No kidding. Because, yeah, the the last time they had Record Store Day, you talked about that. And I think you wore your Irritable Dad Syndrome shirt. Yeah. And you mentioned that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. I assume that the person listening in Loveland is from Plaid Room Records. If not, no need to write. Right. Anyway. Uh, I went there on a journey. I have a vinyl collection. You've seen. Oh, it's a good my one vinyl too. collection. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's I like moderate. your vinyl collection. It's yeah. not. It's, yeah. I'm not one of these psychopaths. You don't have to have four thousand vinyls no. to have a cool vinyl collection. The vinyl that you have, mm. like nine tenths of it, you can't find anywhere. Yeah, and say so here's the issue: is that once you start down this road of vinyl, and we've talked about this before, you and I, yes, uh, in private, we off the podcast. Yeah, but now I'm airing our dirty laundry. Mm-hmm. You and I have spoken about how once you purchase your first vinyl, or in most cases, end up with your first vinyl, mm-hmm. then it's like I've got that, and now I've got to get this. So uh, I recently, though, I'm on an Oasis kick, and my favorite album, not their best album, I think their best album is What's the Story, Morning Glory. I concur. My favorite album is Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. Okay. And I realized I don't have that on the vinyl. And it's a beautiful vinyl because it has a picture of the New York skyline and the band on top of one of the skyscrapers, and you see everything, and far in the distance, you see the World Trade Center. So besides being a beautiful picture, it's also you got a little bit of you yeah. know it's it, it's it's wonderful. So yeah. I like I need to have that because it's my favorite and because it's it's there. So I went to the Plaid Room Records with my irritable dad shirt and I brought a uh, uh, a felt tip pen for signing autographs and everything. Once I was recognized, did anybody ask you they for would an autograph? Swarm me. No. 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 Okay. Okay. No. Maybe they were giving you your space. I had made sure that my phone was charged in case anybody wanted selfies, <laughs> and then I could send it to them. You know, they might have thought that um, of the two of us, that yeah. you are the one who's unapproachable. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and so then when I was at the counter purchasing the vinyl, <laughs> I had the golden opportunity to say, you know, I'm him. Mm, I'm that guy. To which, to yeah. which she yes, would I have am. said, mm-hmm. uh, who? Who? <laughs> Which yeah. is why I didn't say that. However, right. I will say that I did get a 15% discount on my vinyl. Uh, why? And when you don't expect it, they're having a sale. They're having oh, a fall sale. So, okay. They have random sales. That's one of the things. That's two beautiful things about Plaid Room Records, if I may. They have random sales. And they also have deeply discounted damaged vinyls. Now, Darren. Mike. You come from the bowels of Tennessee. 
<laughs> I'm from the cockles of West Virginia, I call it right? Bowels. Now, when we I mean, sometimes I lived near Tennessee Eastman, so yeah, it did smell that bad. Yeah, when we think of something as damaged, Eastman Kodak Company, you know. So to me, a new truck is a new truck. A damaged truck is Mater, right? Right. It's it's messed up. Yep. With a buck tooth and a tongue hanging mm-hmm. out, right? Mm-hmm. They will. I I looked at one of their damaged Talking Heads albums. Yeah. For a long time. Because it had the damage sticker on it, and it was damn near half price. I looked at it for a long time, and I finally found a slight bend about an inch and a half off to the left on the front side of the cellophane covering the vinyl. Oh, my God. That's the damage. That's Okay, that's not... No, what? that's I, not damage to the to the vinyl. Uh, so Pink Floyd back uh-huh. in the day, yeah, they did a tour, the Delicate Sound of Thunder, mm. the Delicate Sound of Thunder tour. Yeah, they tour. released a lot tour 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 yeah. tour tour not, tour not tour tour tour. Oh, <laughs> they released a double CD, mm-hmm. right? I've got that. There's another whole set of recordings from that show. But they can only fit what they what on those two CDs. They released a triple vinyl set. Yeah, ungodly expensive. Some chucklehead went mm-hmm. into Plaid Room Records and dropped it to where it made a little crinkle on the edge. That's it. Uh huh. Now I own it. Oh, okay. For the price of what is so, a standard vinyl. So was it the damage to the sleeve? No. Or to the actual vinyl? No, 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 no. It was a damage to the cardboard. So there were sleeve three vinyls in there, mm-hmm. and they are held in a cardboard thing, and it had like a little wrinkle on the side. Okay. And fun fact, that's not even there anymore. Just being and living and breathing in uh-huh. this environment, it's just, just, it's just yeah. gone. Okay. So uh, I was wondering- I made out like a, a like a. A bandit, uh-huh. as they say. You're listening to Irritable Dad Syndrome, Cincinnati's comedy podcast. That is without question the funniest story I've ever heard. I went to Dallas. My company had a promotional event at the State Fair of Texas. Don't call it the Texas State Fair. I was about to call it the Texas it's State the Fair. It's the State Fair of Texas. Is this like Ohio University and the Ohio University and never the twain it's shall meet? Never the twain. Yeah, it's, mm. it's the official... State Fair of Texas. Yeah. And oh boy, was it hot. Mm. But before I got there, I had to fly out there. Yeah. And I noticed something. Our airport is weird. The Cincinnati, okay? the Cincinnati airport in Kentucky. The, yeah, the Cincinnati is airport. Odd. If you fly into Cincinnati, mm. you don't fly into Cincinnati. You fly into northern Kentucky. Mm-hmm. But people think they're flying into Cincinnati and they're wrong because it's the Cincinnati, northern Kentucky International Airport in Covington, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, actually, it's in Hebron. You think they it's would in call Hebron. it? Yeah. You think they would call it the Northern Kentucky Airport. Cincinnati Airport? Yes. Or the Northern Kentucky Airport? Yeah, because it's in Kentucky. Yeah. The, it's not in Cincinnati. Right. But you know, when you land, the flight attendant almost called stewardess. That's wrong. Hmm. The flight attendant, the flight wench. We would like you. <laughs> we'd like to welcome you to Cincinnati, <laughs> where the current temperature is yeah. and winds are from the west. Or whatever. Yeah. You know, so. so I'm I'm getting ready to fly out to Dallas, mm. and I've been to our airport many many times, and I'm it's almost to the point where I can walk through the place blindfolded. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm very comfortable with this airport. Mm. But on this occasion, I had an hour and a half to kill, and I'm just walking around the airport. I noticed that our airport has a library. Have you noticed that? A library. There's a library in the airport. You can go in there like with used books that other people have touched. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mike, any library that yeah. people have touched the books. Yeah, but okay. I mean, they, you're not going to find a library where someone a hasn't touched the books. They have that sells new books, but this is for There's, the. They've still been touched, though. This is for the scholar that wants to get. Okay, the yeah. The 1950s treatise on the Scotland Yard. Huh? What? What? So I'm walking through this library, and it's just a a, a little room the size of a, like a gift shop. And there's a bunch of books there. There's a chil- Are you sure you weren't in a gift shop? No, there's a children's section okay. and there's an adult section. Oh. I'm like, ooh, let's go to the adult section. Yeah. There's nothing adult about the- <laughs> no, not the Canadian mounted. No, no, no. <laughs> Any of these books that you want, you can take and you can read them on the plane, in the airport, that whatever. That sounds like a bad idea. I don't know why. Well, I mean... You're in an airport. Yeah. What's wrong with that? You're you're in an... It's, it's, it's an international airport. Mm-hmm. You could take... A book, mm-hmm. let's say The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right. and fly to China, and they'll never get it back. 
Well, no, you're not supposed to bring it back. Right. right. Yeah. So how do they have books there? They encourage people to donate books. To so if wherever you... they go? <laughs> what are oh, you not to understand? them. To, to, to the, them. Yes. Oh. To the library. This is a one-way library. Yes. You pick out anything you want. Really? And you read it. And if you want to read it and then pass it on to a passenger yeah. flying somewhere else. Okay. Hey, I read this. You want it? Take it. What They're encouraging just... reading. And if you have books that you want to donate to the library okay. at the at the International CVG Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Airport, you can. This is fascinating. Yeah, and I'm walking around, and I'm thinking, uh, these books are free. I should take a free book. Yeah. Right? But yeah. I didn't because I know I'm not going to read it. <laughs> and then guilt swept over me like a, like a river. Oh. Okay? Yeah. And I was because you weren't reading. Be, no, because I, I wanted to take a book so that the guy would think. You know how I want people to think that I read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So yeah. I was gonna. This book looks really good, and I was going to read this on my plane. Yeah, and then the guy would see through me. He would know that I'm lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I didn't take a book, okay. but I almost did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we have a library. Something else that's weird about our airport. Yeah. Is since it's in Kentucky, there is a gift shop called. Like I think it's called Bluegrass Bazaar okay. or something. Yeah, it's a gift shop. Okay, you mm-hmm. can buy shot glasses, yeah. sweatshirts, candy, magazines. Yeah. Okay. Mm. At the front of the Bluegrass Bazaar, and I may have that name wrong. There's a banjo. Mm-hmm. It's on display. It's okay. a banjo because we're in Kentucky. Of course, everybody in Kentucky has a banjo, right? Yeah. I asked the lady, "Uh, how much for the banjo?" <laughs> <laughs> She's. Just, Excuse me? Uh, the banjo. How much for the banjo? Yeah. Oh, that's not for sale. Well, and I said, well, why do you have it? Because I'm just being a jerk. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, let's say I wanted to buy the banjo, and then she lost interest in having a conversation <laughs> with me. <laughs> so, uh, so you I... You wore out your welcome. So I wandered yeah. off, and I'm walking through our airport, and there's all these uh, dinosaur exhibits. Yeah. Di- I, dinosaur yeah, I, I know those. Yeah, yeah those because are there. Because Kentucky... Apparently, it was just riddled with dinosaurs yeah. back in the day. They yeah. were right and left. You could well, swing Jurassic a... Park was filmed just yeah. down the road yeah, here. Yeah, you could swing a dead cat and hit a dinosaur. <laughs> but I'm like, why? That's just It's just interesting that you, you land at Kentucky and you see all these dinosaurs in the airport. I'm not yeah. saying I'm not against it. I'm I just, just amazed. I, I know I know the dinosaurs. There was a period of my life where I was I lived at the airport. I was like uh, the Mr. Handkerchief in uh, the terminal. Yeah, Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah, I was in there all the time. I never saw the banjo. Yeah, and I didn't, had no idea there was a library. I did, would have a lot more books. Did you fly that. American Airlines? No, or Delta. Okay. I always fly Delta. I flew American Airlines, no. so it was on that part of the uh, uh, mm, mm-hmm. the Trader's World yeah. side of the <laughs> airport. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Gloves are off. Yeah. So I go through the airport, and I, I went through security fine. I went through baggage check fine, and uh, everything was going great. And I'm on my plane, and I'm flying to Dallas, and the flight attendant. Yeah. There, there were two flight attendants. Yeah. One was a, a lady, and she seemed frustrated. Okay. Like, she's not having the best day. Mm. She was having trouble. She had, just had this look on her face, just like she's... Unsure what she's doing, why she's there, and she's just What's having the a lot point of, of what, it all. exactly yeah. right. The hell so, am I even doing? So she's just who gives a <laughs> if this guy gets his crackers or not. I don't think she was like in an uncaring mood. I think she was just an existential crisis, possibly. Yeah. Right? Because coffee or water like, does it really matter yeah. if we all die eventually? Anyway? Well, she takes the cart down the aisle. Yeah. Right? She gets past me, uh-huh. and she's having trouble opening the can. Of whatever she's trying to open, and she's like just futzing with it, and <laughs> this is like a baseball player forgetting how to hold a ball. Exactly, this is like right in. It's like if you can't open the can, why yeah, are you a flight yeah, attendant? Yeah, yeah. Right? I think they cover that in orientation. Yeah, so she's just she's just not having it today. Mm. She's not dealing with mm-hmm. it. The guy, right? Yeah. He had a shaved head. It's like he was. <laughs> he was. He probably still has a shaved head. Yeah. He was like auditioning for his stand up routine. Oh, yeah. Every single word, hello, ladies. Hey, you know, and, and the yeah. woman's like, Can I have a Dr. Pepper? You can have the Dr. Pepper. Oh, no. there, there, there's only one left. Yeah. Okay, okay, so, yeah. and he would do that. He would say something, and, and, and you know, that there's only, uh, that's why I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> he had this you, tone. You, you can edit that out. Yeah. He yeah. had this tone of voice, and he had this tone of voice. Oh, yeah. And so this woman's like, Can I have a sprite? And he says, Can you have a sprite? Oh, yeah. Boy. You can have this sprite. 
It comes in extra large or small. Uh, they're the same size. Okay. <laughs> and and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> You know, and yeah. they're loving it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, okay, this guy enjoys his job. So this guy's like, again, he's like uh, Shecky Green. Mm. And then the woman with him is just, she can't figure out anything that's going on. She was on. playing the straight. Uh, she was the straight, straight man to his. Man to his, to his, his she goofy. was Dean to his Jerry. Yeah. They get to me. Okay. And uh, I asked for a Coke. Uh -huh. And then. You know, they gave me a pack of cookies, right? Oh. And the Biscoff cookies. Uh -huh. And I love the Biscoff mm. cookies. They're a sponsor for this podcast. Yeah. So I'm eating my cookies and I'm thinking, God, I wish, I wonder if I could get another pack of cookies. I, I it's want, always worth asking. I want to ask, but I also don't want to ask because yes. here I'm this fat guy. Can I have more cookies? Yeah. And then everyone's like, a yeah, fat guy over there wants more cookies. Uh -huh. And so they went past me and I didn't ask. I swear to God, the mm. woman sitting right in front of me, she turns around and goes, oh, excuse me, can I have another pack of cookies? Oh, and you and the dude, you And the dude, says, dude yeah. says, yeah. And I was like, and I asked him, I said, wait, wait, wait. You can do that? You can ask for more? And he says, do you want more cookies? I said, yeah, I would. I would love more cookies. Yeah, yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I, I can hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Yeah. So he, he goes back. Uh-huh. Comes over and then he like everybody hears him say, "I'm going to hook you up with the with the cookies." Yeah, yeah. He like still sneaks them to me, gives me three packs of cookies. Holy, <laughs> hands it to me. And he's like, Shh, "Here's three packs of cookies." Wow. Walks up three rows, turns around, comes back, hands me two more. <laughs> Did he take them from another passenger? No, no he just oh, like that would have been awesome. <laughs> that, nope. These <laughs> these go to this guy over yeah. here. So gives me three, walks up, comes back, gives me two more. Wow. And the lady sitting next to me goes, oh, I know who I'm robbing. I'm like, I, I, what, what the? I, what? Yeah. You wow. could have asked You could have asked yeah. for more cookies, too. Yeah. I just asked, you know. You I, were I an opportunist. I, was, I thought I was point. just getting one pack, you yeah. know. Hmm. Something else that happened on that flight was when the, the snack cart was ahead of us. The lady who was all frustrated, the flight attendant who didn't know what was going on, hmm. she walks away from the cart. That son of a bitch started rolling back. Uh, yeah. Me and this lady, we both reached our arms out and stopped it, okay? We risked breaking our arms. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we possibly saved lives. That's dangerous. Okay. Those things are made out of lead and plutonium. They are. Well, and the moral is, you know, heroes, not all of them wear capes, okay? Right. So we saved lives and we stopped. And then the frustrated lady comes back. She doesn't even say, oh, I should have held on to that. <laughs> Stand-up comedian flight attendant says, sorry, folks, it's her first day. It might be her last day. <laughs> <laughs> this portion of Irritable Dead Syndrome is brought to you by Lotus Biscoff Cookies. Hi, I'm Dave Lay, and I love traveling. It seems like every couple of months I get the urge to visit people and places anywhere on this great planet. And that's why I'm a big fan of Lotus Biscoff Cookies. Whenever I'm flying and the stewardess asks if I want a snack, I say, hell yeah, I want a snack, and make that snack a pack of Lotus Biscoff cookies. Since 1932, Lotus Biscoff cookies have been made with all natural ingredients. They're crunchy, and that caramelized flavor has made them the preferred choice of every major airline that serves snacks. Lotus Biscoff cookies. Mmm, now those are some good cookies. Back to you guys in the studio. Got to Dallas is ninety four degrees, record heat. Mm. Uh, it was like a record high. They, yeah, they'd never seen heat that that much in October. Yeah, at the State Fair of Texas. Mm. And have you ever been to a State Fair? I've been to the Ohio State Fair, they, but I was like a little kid. I they remember Pac Man have was it. deep fried food. Yeah, at the State Fair. Yeah, and I've I've heard about this forever and ever. It's mm -hmm. like legendary, and so I'm they'll like deep fry anything like ice. They'll yeah. deep fry it. They don't give a <laughs> shit. deep fried oxygen. Just fry yeah. like a cat. I got a, a fried it. bandana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're all there, and a lot of the team, uh, some of the younger kids on our team. Yeah, uh, they did their shift, and then they went off and were riding rides. Okay. And my God, they bought this and this and these two girls and this one guy uh, on our team had eaten almost everything you could eat yeah. at the fair. How they're alive, I don't know. Did they have deep fried butter? That's the they one did. That's, oh, they God. had. I didn't try it. I wanted to. Yeah, I really wanted to. Did you think about bringing him some home for camera? <laughs> <laughs> He, he likes would, to eat it just, just yeah, plain. He would get yeah. solid on yeah. that. Yeah, my buddy bought some deep fried ravioli. Okay. That was good. Okay. He bought some chicken fried bacon strips. 
Okay. That was really good. Okay. okay. I had a deep fried Twinkie. Oh, was that? Was that? <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Okay. It was good. It wasn't amazing. Yeah. But what I had that would make you just smack your mother mm-hmm. was a deep fried peanut butter and banana sandwich oh. with grape jelly. <laughs> Wow. Honest to God, I bought it and I'm walking around just going. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> I ate it before I went back to where our booth was set yeah, up. We yeah. were there for a promotional event. We were giving out free stuff. Yeah. Because also, I didn't want to share it with anybody. <laughs> Mike, it was all I could do to not turn around, go yeah. back, and buy another Holy one. Holy crap. It was amazing. Hmm. And, you know, our company gave us all like 35 tickets a day okay. to eat and buy anything we wanted to. Yeah. I had a state fair corn dog. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't have deep fried Mountain Dew. <laughs> but, like, my God, they had it, it, like almost anything you could imagine they'd put in the deep fryer. I had deep fried peach cobbler. And I'll tell you what, it was so hot. And we were working out in the heat doing, uh, uh, we were playing Plinko. You put your, the chip up there, and it drops, and, and if yeah. it lands on whatever letter, you yeah. can win a keychain or a pencil or, or, yeah, or a that, eraser. Well, yeah, well, the eraser comes with the pencil. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we had this giant box of pencils, and one of the guys on our team was like, "Come on, get a lifetime supply of pencils." <laughs> Nobody wanted the pencils. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah so it was wow. cool. And one of the things we did at our booth was we had a roping contest. Okay, if you could rope this little calf, it was a fake cow. Okay. Okay. And then you could win like a squeezy cow, or you could win this big foam cowboy hat, okay. right? Yeah. And all the kids wanted the cowboy hat. Yeah, everyone yeah. wanted the cowboy hat. And th- so many people came up and wanted to try this, and there were so many who were like, "I don't know what I'm doing." I'm like, "Lady, nobody knows what they're doing. Yeah. It's a state fair, okay? It's the state fair of Texas. Yeah, and we're not judging you. It's just for fun, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. The- people were having a great yeah. time. Ninety percent of what we're doing is illegal, <laughs> <laughs> except at a state fair. <laughs> This one kid comes up. He's got to be 15, and he's got a Stetson hat and sunglasses and this big belt buckle and oh. his shirt tucked in with his jeans and his Clearly boots. Clearly means business. Yeah. 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 And he okay. goes, uh, hey, hey, can I try Can I try roping that cow? Oh, Lord. And I said, sure. And he grabs yeah. hold of the rope. He goes, I, now, I've never held a rope like this. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm uh, – am I holding it right? Okay. Like, Sounds like a hustler. I, I'm like, yeah, I th- yeah. You're, you're holding it right. And I swear to God, he takes a step back and goes – Throws it, yeah. And he yanks that cow, this this little fake cow, off its feet. <laughs> he goes, "Did I do it?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. you did it." And then yeah. his buddy's like, "Oh, whoa, I want to try it too." I'm like, "Don't, uh, y- like y- a, you guys, <laughs> you're like not, the high point you're of not, this year right there. you're not trying anything. They clearly, <laughs> cool. do, I mean, if it was a real cow, they would have just yanked yeah. that damn thing right off the ground. Yeah. yeah. It was impressive. Yeah. And there was a bunch of people who actually knew how to rope. I mean, we were in Texas. Yeah. You're going to run into to a handful of people who know how to rope a cow. It was something else. And, you know, despite all the crap that I ate, mm-hmm. it was so hot. I still lost like four pounds <laughs> <laughs> from just working in all that stupid heat. Did your tum-tums hurt after all that? Did you have to take any no. heart, heartburn medication? No. Uh-uh. No. No. Wow. No, I think I sweated it all out. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. My God, I'm, I've never drank so much water in my life. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm out there, you know, meeting and greeting and talking to everybody and yeah. giving away free stuff, sweating my balls off. <laughs> I mean, I am just, we're all just drenched yeah. with sweat. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. I mean, we had to have smelled horrible. That's part we're at the of state it. fair. The fair. Yeah, yeah, you're next to pig races. <laughs> they had pig races. <laughs> they did have okay, pig races. All right. I saw a steer with uh, horns that from point to point had to have been 20 feet. Holy crap. I know. It was yeah. insane. Hmm. <laughs> but you know what? The people were really cool, and I had a blast. That's cool. And uh, every, I'm going to say it right now. Every person in Dallas who I met at the State Fair, you guys were fantastic. We were there on the same day that they had the Cotton Bowl. Oklahoma okay. versus uh, Texas State, I believe. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, there were so many drunk people. This drunk guy came out, tried to ride our cow, damn near broke it. <laughs> I was like, uh, sir, can you, I had to, can you not get, can you get off our cow, please? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. looked like he was trying to, the cow. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, come on, there's kids here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's for the, it's the after nine o'clock activities. <laughs> it's a, exactly. Hello. While I was in Dallas, uh-huh. uh, one of the people on our team, 
wanted to go, and this is a, like a serious moment here, wanted to go see where JFK was assassinated Okay. on Dealey Plaza. Yeah. And so we're like, okay. I mean, you're there. Yeah. How can you pass up the opportunity? There's a JFK museum. We didn't have time to go to the, to the museum, mm-hmm. but we went. We saw the grassy knoll. We saw the book depository. They have uh, two X's stamped into the ground where JFK was shot and then where the second bullet hit him, right? It's kind of morbid. It's, well, it's very okay. morbid. Very yeah. morbid. Very somber moment. But there's you know history, historical information to read, and yeah. you know all kinds of stuff to learn. Here's my take on this. Uh-huh. People were walking into the road, standing on the X with their kids, smiling, oh, hey, my God. pointing yeah. like it's guys. It's not the Grand Canyon. No, this okay, is it not, ain't Disney World. It's not that kind of photo. No, it's not that type of photo. I took wow. photos. Yeah, I yeah. took photos of the grassy knoll. Took photos of the book depository. Okay. I took some photos of the X's, and uh, you know, God, my mom was such a fan of JFK. Yeah. And uh, I sent those to her, and she was all sad again. I mean, I'm glad I went. It was just, it was really, yeah. really weird, the feeling you get when you're there. But um, these people were killing me with yeah. the, hey, look at this. Were any of them, like, laying down on the X's with their tongue out, like, <laughs> like going that weird Well, stuff, I like... mean, if traffic wasn't, you know, oh, it's an active gosh. road. Yeah. And we even drove over it when we got the Uber to take us back to the mm-hmm. hotel. Mm-hmm. We drove right over. Okay. We were in the lane. Yeah. So it was creepy. It's time now for the Kroger Story of the Week. I've stolen from Kroger before. Okay. Accidentally. What, like, what? I've, I've talked about it before. You mean like eating grapes? No, no, no. Because that's, like, that's technically Go my, through that's the stealing. self-checkout, get mm-hmm. to the car, and holy crap, there's like three things on the bottom that I didn't right. check out. What I do, have done in those situations, is unload the stuff that I did pay for, mm-hmm. take all the other crap back in, go yep. through the line again. I yep. always get a weird look from the person that's watching. Hi, I'm back. And then I pay for those things and I leave and I feel fulfilled and happy. Well, you're an honest person. Uh, I try to be. So today I stopped at Kroger to get some additional things. I didn't have a lot of time to be there. And I'm going through the self-checkout and you know, it does the things where it, it, beeps at you. Oh, you didn't put something in the bag and you paid for it, or you paid for it and you didn't put it in the bag, or you've done something to piss off the system and you've got to wait for it to correct itself right? or wait for the person to come over and say, Whoa, and push a button <laughs> and go on with your life. I love when you get the frustrated person. Yeah. So, Like, look, it's not my fault the thing stops. So they have things at the door mm-hmm. that, like, scan your card as you're going out. And they used to have wheel locks. Did you ever get your wheel locked? Yes. You're, you're trucking along and all of a sudden, <laughs> meh, and you're like, it's practically like a, a, a pile up out yeah. there. And when it did lock, yeah. they came and just unlocked me. Yeah, they just let you go. They just unlocked me. Yeah. They didn't ask me, hey, what did you steal, Darren mm. Cox? So it dawned on me uh, a couple of months ago, I could just, I always get a warning on the thing. I could just take things. Yeah. Uh, so... I'm walking out today. Now I. By, paid. by the way, irritable dad syndrome does not condone stealing. No, we, from don't grocery stores. St- we don't. We don't condone stealing. <clears throat> I paid but, I mean, for if everything. You get away with it. There's, you know. I was in a hurry. Uh huh. Right. I had to get to this moment here uh-huh. to do this podcast. This magic. Moment. We've got fans right now. We do waiting to hang out with us. Hi. How are you? I don't have time to futz around. No. In Kroger. No. I'm going through that thing. Mm-hmm. I get the. Mer, mer, Please return to the blah, blah, blah. You know what I did? Mm -hmm. Kept trucking. You just kept trucking? Yeah. I just kept trucking. Yeah. And I get close to my car, and I looked back over my shoulder, Uh which is what a guilty person would do. Yes. As they start walking faster. And I I did, because I realized (laughs) after I did that, I looked guilty. So I start going faster. I get to my car. The whole time, I'm lifting the thing up, Uh and I'm... You know, looking your, your, over there, your trunk, yeah, and, uh, yeah, trunk, and I'm I'm putting stuff in You're there, th- stealing all the I, diet root beer. I close it. I make another shifty eyed look at the front. Now, remember, I paid for everything. Yes. I'm legal. I have a receipt uh-huh. for every item in that car. But I thought I just walked out of Kroger with a full basket mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah, it alarmed. Mm-hmm. It said, "Stop this man! There's a problem. He's stealing things. Yes, danger." And I didn't just stare one way i was looking back i looked as suspicious as you could yeah and nobody did anything no <laughs> they, they don't they don't do a damn thing uh-uh. <laughs> it reminded me of the old louis ck bit where he, he he rented a car and you're supposed to take it back to a place and he didn't mm-hmm. and he just called him from the plane and said yeah i left your car on the road 
And they said, you can't do that. And he's like, well, I just did. I did, yeah. Because they're going to want their car. They're not just going to leave it there. They just let me go. <laughs> so a, a part of me thought, I could just do this every time. Save a ton on groceries. Mm-hmm. I think eventually they would notice, though, wouldn't they? Hey, every time that bald guy comes in, we're he missing, sets off alarms. We're missing alarms. $250. We, we, we're losing about $250 <laughs> a week in groceries. <laughs> I mean, they see yeah. me so often yeah. that they probably, and uh, you know me, I talk to everybody. Yeah. Like, oh, that's wacky uh, bald guy. That's Dougie. Yeah, uh, Dougie Fresh. Fresh. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't steal anything. No. He's here all the time. No. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a thing. So when I finally crack and I lose all respect for any societal norms or rules, which will probably happen November 6th. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to start doing. <laughs> they don't even check you on the card thing. Like if you're buying alcohol, if you're buying wine or whatever, they just they don't even look at me anymore. Well, come on. I'm pretty sure no one's going to card you, Mike. I'm just saying. At right. least do me the... It used to be... Make my day. It used to be make my day, ask yeah. me for the card. But at least look at me. Could you look at me? Because you acknowledge that I'm the one. I'm uh-huh. thinking about sending like one of the kids through with a big old case of beer to see mm-hmm. what happens. When I worked at Winn Dixie, yeah, the cashiers can't scan beer. Okay, yeah, if they're if not, they're if they're underage, if they're under eighteen, yeah. they can't scan beer. Yeah. So they have to find someone of age to scan beer. Yeah, and if they would ask, uh, like say me, mm-hmm. if I thought somebody was underage, I had to check their ID. Okay, okay. So the rule was, if they look under thirty. Look at their ID. Okay. Yeah. So this guy comes through, cashier is underage, mm. and uh, she says, Darren, can you scan the beer? And so I said, sure. And I walked over. I took a look at the guy. I scanned his beer. Have a good day. Yeah. My boss comes down and he goes, uh, hang on, uh, sir, hang on for a second. I need to see your ID. He says, oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then he says, Darren, can you come here a second? Mm. I said, yeah. He goes, if they look under 30, I want you to look at their ID. Check them out. And mm. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Um, uh yeah, I mean I thought he was like twenty six or twenty seven. So uh but yeah, I I definitely will okay. next time. And yeah. I said, um uh, by the way, how old was the guy? <laughs> He's like twenty seven. <laughs> he, he was twenty seven. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Okay. I, I've I've been in a <laughs> Nailed place it. Yeah, I've been in a place, I'm not kidding, where they, they have a little note that says if you're under seventy five, we'll card you. If you yes. look like you're under seventy five. Yes. And I know why they're doing that, because they probably had people you know, like I'm, you are ink. I'm 44 years old. You're inconveniencing me. You're, but I'm, yeah, I'm here to tell you, folks. There are areas of the country, mm-hmm. and I come from one of them, where you could have somebody come through with a cane, mm-hmm. missing teeth, gray beard, <laughs> and they're 17, 17 years old. <laughs> it's like they got their kids in the car. They had a life of like, skull <laughs> bandit. Guess, yeah, give me some skull bandits in <laughs> old Milwaukee. It's like, Jeez, dude, you're not even old enough to vote. <laughs> You've got like five years left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> this has been the Kroger Story of the Week. While I was at the State Fair of Texas, they have bands who play there all day long, mm. every night. And it's like three weeks. Yeah. And I remember I was looking up who was going to be there. Who was there the night that I was there, like the Saturday I was there, this band called St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Okay. Okay. When David Letterman was on, had his CBS show, he had them on. Oh my God! Okay, they are absolutely amazing. Okay, this the singer, he's just this. And no offense if you're listening, singer for St. Paul and the Broken Boats, he's just this balding guy who he kind of looks like an accountant. Okay, he everybody else looks like they would be in a band. Yeah, he does not look like he would be in a band. Yeah. he can sing his damn face off. Okay, okay, he yeah. can. He like has a voice. You know CeeLo Green? Uh, I've heard the name. Yeah. He, yeah. he has a voice kind of similar to him. He dances like James Brown. Okay. He's all over the place. Okay. He he uh, he's, <laughs> he is an insane... And he doesn't do that. <clears throat> okay. He, he does that dance where you shimmy your right foot and then you drag your left. And then you shimmy your left foot and you drag your right. Yeah. And uh, he's got the crowd right in the palm of his hands. Okay. okay? Yeah. So... Uh, I they were gonna be there, and I was so excited. And all day long, I'm telling people after my shift, I'm going to see St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Yeah, and people are like, "Who?"
So all day long, I'm at the fair, yes. the state fair of Texas. Yes. And I'm telling my friends, my coworkers, mm-hmm. they're they're equal, they're friends and coworkers. Yes. That tonight, after I get off my break, eight thirty, I am going to see Saint Paul and the Broken Bones. Who? Mm-hmm. Saint Paul and the Broken Bones. Who are they? They're a band. I saw them on Letterman. They play soul music. Yeah. They've got a horn section. They're funky. Yeah. They're they're great, and I can't wait. And then I would tell somebody else, and I would tell somebody else, I would tell somebody else, hey, if you want to go, it's free. I'm going down there at 8.30 to come to the show with me if you want. Yeah. Hang out with Darren. I'm fun at concerts. Yeah. One person from work went. He didn't hang out with me, though. He was like way, way, way in the back. He's back with the, he, he's the sitting, he's sitting deep back. fried he peanut didn't, butter yeah. banana. <laughs> he didn't want to get in the crowd. Yeah. Okay. The mosh pit for St. Paul <laughs> for and the Broken Paul Bones, Bones is, was insane. It's right there yeah. in the yeah. name. <laughs> So of all the people on the team that I told about, one person came, and after the show, he's like, oh, my God, Darren was right. This band is, it was amazing. And, yeah. like, and my, my friend's like, what band? And the, they keep, I'm like, I told everybody. Hmm. And then the next morning, I'm describing the band, and then they're, they're like going on Spotify. You know what Spotify is a music download. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, hey, they sound pretty cool. Yeah. And one guy's like, I kind of wish I'd went. I tried to. Oh. Like I tried, I tried mm. so hard. Mm. Like guys, if you get a recommend, okay. Here, hi, I'm Darren, co-host of Veritable Dad Center. Mm-hmm. If I ever give you a recommendation for a band that you should see live, th- take it from me. Yeah, they're a good band to see live. Yeah, okay, try. It's free. Ah, that's it was, infuriating. It was, it was free, and you, they missed mm. one of the funkiest, grooviest. Be- I mean, they were amazing. The horn section was were insane. The trombone player did a solo. The saxophone mm-hmm. player did a solo. The mm-hmm. trumpet guy did a solo. Keyboardist turned his keyboard into the cheeses. Wah, 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 mm-hmm. wah, wah, you know, mm-hmm. guitarist was was all over the place. The drummer was mm-hmm. uh, God. The drummer was great. The bass player, if the bass player for Saint Paul and the Broken Bones ever toured just by himself, he was. I mean, no, and no offense to the rest of the band. The bass player was so damn funky. Mm. I would have just just seen him. Yeah. But the lead singer, who's outlandish, yeah. who's flamboyant, and just crazy, at one point crawls underneath the thing where the drums were. Okay, <laughs> like like he like Gollum yeah. getting into his hole, you know. <laughs> and and he's still singing <laughs> underneath the drums. Okay, and then he climbs back yeah. out. And just <laughs> it's like a prairie dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. Wow. And yeah. we're all like, what is he doing? <laughs> what on earth is yeah. he doing? Yeah. And he even came out in like this giant choir robe. Okay. Okay. All glittery. St. Paul. Saint, yeah. Yeah. Uh, amazing. I cannot recommend them enough. Something else happened at the concert. There was a couple up and over from me. They were almost having full on intercourse. Oh, Jeez. That's always fun at a concert. Yeah. That's right. Go see St. Paul in the Broken Go see Bones. Saint Paul yeah, Broken yeah. Bones. Uh, you reminded me of a story, and I think I've told it on here. I can't remember if I've told it on here or told it to you mm-hmm. outside of the recording, but yep. I'm going to tell it again. Okay. And if you've heard it before, then I don't care. Um, story time with Mike. Because you triggered a memory with me when mm-hmm. you were asking people, do you want to go see this? And everybody's like, who, what, who, what? I was on a business trip in Chicago in the 2000s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, me and a guy that I was traveling with went to, it was Tower Records. Right? Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. Like a two-story record store. Yeah. And there was a guy standing in front of the staircase that went upstairs to the second. And you could tell something was going on up there. Mm-hmm. You couldn't hear anything, but there were like lights flashing. And there's a guy just standing there like a bouncer. And I just said, "What what's going up there? He's like, oh, Garbage is here to celebrate their, their new album. Yeah. It was Garbage 2.0. It was their second album. Yeah. So, uh, kids, Garbage was a band in the 90s in the yeah. 90s that was created of music producers like Butch Vig. Uh the only one that wasn't a music producer was the the vocalist. But everybody else was a producer of other bands. Yeah. It was like a little super group of producers. And their first album was amazing. Yeah. Uh had Stupid Girl is the is oh, the I love Stupid set. Girl. I can listen to that over and over and over and over. So that was what they were writing the success of when I saw this. And mm-hmm. when I, and I was like whole I was like does, is it free? And he's like, oh yeah, absolutely free. He's like, you, he's like, the band's up there just mingling, 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 talking to you, you. I was like, you just walk around. Yeah. He's like, at some point they're going to pick up their instruments and start playing. But yeah, I was like, 
holy crap, I could I could see garbage, I could talk to them, I mm-hmm. could just I could meet Butch Vig, who at yeah. the time was the producer for Smashing Pumpkins or one of them. I was like, holy crap. And the guy I was with was like, eh, I'm not really into that. <laughs> it's like you don't know. You just what you... <laughs> I was like I mean I mean, I, I, I was like, a, yeah, really? a guy like you who has such an eclectic taste oh, in music. So, oh, I didn't have the testicular fortitude to just say, <laughs> I'm going to go up and watch him. You uh-huh. do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Maybe I'll see you at the event tomorrow. I don't know. But I'm going to go see Garbage. Yeah. And meet them and hang out with them. Yeah. Weirdo. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, just, I didn't. I just didn't do it. That's one of the things that everyone, yeah. you triggered that and it got me all yeah. pissed off again over it. But again, St. Paul and the Broken Bones, free. A free show. They played an hour and fifteen minutes. That's really good. And it, I just, I, I went back, and then the next day I told everybody, I said, "You really, really missed yeah. it. A yeah. free show, yeah. free. That's awesome." <laughs> This portion of our show is brought to you by Dave Lay Heating and Cooling. Hi, I'm Dave Lay, and I've been the announcer for Irritable Dad Syndrome for a couple of years now. And let's face it, the podcast money ain't rolling in like we had hoped. So I opened up my own heating and cooling company to make ends meet. Now you might ask, Dave, what do you know about heating and cooling? Well, here's the thing. I know when a room is too hot and when a room is too cold. And somebody has to do something about it. Schedule an appointment today, and I'll give you a free estimate, plus a new filter. Limited time only. Offer may vary. See website for details. Dave Lay Heating and Cooling, for people who want their home to feel just right. Now, back to the show. I've been on the Reddits lately. Okay. And I, I there was there's been a couple of threads. I've been there's a concerts Reddit and I've been pretty active in there. And a couple of questions popped up. And I was like, I want to ask Darren these questions. So one of them, okay. you're not going to know off the top of your head, or maybe you will. I might. It was what are the first five current concerts you've saw? Okay. What let me rephrase that in English. What are the first five concerts you've seen? And then what are the last five concerts you've seen? Okay, so like rock music concerts? Uh, or, I would or say concerts? anything. I would say anything. Okay. When I was five, uh, or very, very early, my parents took me to see Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. Okay. okay. The country music legends. Yes. Okay. I believe that was the very first concert I've ever seen. Okay. I also saw Hank Williams Jr. Okay. Okay. So I saw those two okay. concerts before my first rock concert, which was Brian Adams and Survivor. Wow. Okay. Who was opening for who? Brian Adams was the headliner. Survivor was opening okay. for them. I went because did they I was, do Eye of the Tiger? Oh, God. Yeah, they yeah. did Eye of the Tiger. And they had the album Vital Signs, okay. which had like four, I think, pretty big hits. They were big. This was 84? 85. 85. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's... Badass, uh, and, and Brian Adams was right off his big hit "Heaven." Yeah, and cuts like a cuts yeah. like a knife. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Brian Adams was amazing. Mm-hmm. I saw Rick Springfield. Okay, and then uh, Kiss on the Crazy Nights tour. Crazy Nights. I, 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 be- crazy, crazy, I believe. Crazy, crazy Nights. I'm yeah. pretty sure those are my first. Five concerts. Okay, so I I, I didn't go as far back as you did because mm-hmm. I've seen Steppenwolf when I was a kid, but I didn't claim that. Okay, they were at the Huntington Regatta. You saw Steppenwolf. Yeah, Born to Be Wild. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know who they were. My dad was excited, right. yeah. and I didn't give a <laughs> sure. So I was just a little kid. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But what I counted was the first concert that I like rock concert. So my first one of all time was Smashing Pumpkins. Mm-hmm. My second. Was Pink Floyd? Oh, gee. oh my God! <laughs> okay, well, I think about your kid. You know, Charlie's first concert was U two at the Sphere. <laughs> Anything he goes now is going to be a letdown. Uh, I saw Van Halen and Collective Soul opened for them. Van okay, Halen on the balance with, 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 with Sammy Hagar. Okay, I saw White Zombie. The Ramones opened for them, so I can say I saw the Ramones. But yeah, uh, I saw the Ramones too. Yeah, and I can't remember what the fifth one was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Page and Plant. Okay. And God. rusted rusted root open for them. Okay, I saw rusted root before okay. too. They're amazing alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah they are. They're insane. I've actually seen them twice. I yeah. saw them open for that, and then they came to OU. Now, what are yeah. your last five? Well, St. Paul. Oh my God, I can't remember what. Hootie and the Bluefish. Yeah, Hootie and the Bluefish and yeah. Collective Soul. Uh-huh. Okay, and then 
You saw Offspring with uh, Jacob. Yes. You I'm going to answer you. You remember the concerts. <laughs> Billy Idol. Billy Idol. And Jimmy Buffett. Okay. I think were my last five concerts. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I slowed down. Yeah. Um, I didn't I've go, slowed down recently. Yeah. I, well. I can't, well, I can't, you know, there are so many people who just keep coming through. Yeah. And I'm like, I've already, God, I've already seen you, you know, yeah. twice. And so, tickets are so expensive. Okay. So my last five were Ice Cube. Uh-huh. Hootie and the Blowfish with mm-hmm. the Collective Soul opening yep. with, with you. You two, it's a <laughs> fear. Well, you saw them twice there. So. Three. I'm, I only counted that as one. Okay. You okay. Know, I'm, I'm going to want to be, you know. An- <laughs> now you don't want to be. An- it was just a Reddit thread. And I thought yeah. it was interesting. I was yeah. like, I don't know what Darren's uh, things are. And then another question, which I think I know the answer for you. Mm-hmm. What concert did you go to that completely surprised you? In a good way or a bad way at the band. Like like you were excited to see it, and then you go there and you're like, what the hell was that? Or, I don't want to get to this. And like, holy <laughs> that was amazing. I went to see the Bare Naked Ladies, mm-hmm. and I knew they were going to be good. This band called Guster opened up for them. Okay. And I, I had no idea who they were. Yeah. They blew me away. Okay. Absolutely blew me away. Yeah. I had no idea who they were. Yeah. And I, I bought their album and I listened to it a, a hundred times. Guster was Guster. it similar music to Bare Naked? Ladies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They they would be on the same radio station. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, All um, right. I've I've told you this before. Uh, I saw REM and I had such high expectations for them yeah. and they were horrible. Yeah. And every person I talked to, what? Yeah, Bess was about to cut you when you yeah. said that. Yeah. They were horrible the night I saw them. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. Michael yeah. Stipe was not in it. Mm-hmm. He didn't care. He was a. Mm-hmm. He was just. Just not having it. Mm-hmm. And they would play a song and then wait two or three minutes and then play another song. So it's like you'd get all oh, yeah. ramped up and then it would pause and you yeah. it, it just kept losing the momentum. Mm-hmm. I saw Sting and Sting was phoning it in. Mm-hmm. He ruined Roxanne. He did a Calypso kind mm-hmm. of uh, uh, offbeat, weird version of Roxanne. I mean, just the fact that and, he played Roxanne, I would have walked out yeah, right then. I know, but I was like, yeah. you know, but we went. Uh, it's like okay, yeah, I wanted to see Sting, Tracy Chapman though for him. Tracy Chapman was absolutely amazing. So okay, uh, I went to see the Stone Temple Pilots, mm-hmm. and they, I think lead singer was, I think he was sick that night or something. Wyland, yeah, and it was it was Not boring. Good. It was yeah. very 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 boring, and I was yeah. just like, what's going on here? These are the the Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, and they're eh, you know. yeah. When I went to Lollapalooza, uh-huh. I knew that Rage Against the Machine were going to be on the bill. I had heard their name. Uh-huh. I wasn't exactly sure who they were. Yeah. Good Lord. Knocked your yes, off, didn't they? Yes, yeah. absolutely. They, my <laughs> were in the parking lot. <laughs> hey, what happened? I've, I was mind absolutely. That was yeah. the most mind-blowing moment, and yeah. I was instant fan. Yeah. yeah, I recently had my mind blown by them within mm-hmm. the past couple of months yeah. because I've always listened to my favorite album of theirs is "The Battle for Los Angeles." Yeah, testify. Uh, and I love "Evil Empire," mm-hmm. but I had never listened to "What's Killing in the Name of Their First." What's the name of their first album? I forget. It's, it's got was, "Killing in the that Name." That was just "Raging Against the Machine." Just "Raging Against the Machine." I think, yeah, I listened to it for the first time a couple of months ago, and in the gym, I said out loud. Because it was just one banger after another. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, this is... Uh, uh, and then I'm like, Mike, you're getting excited about a band that's been broken up for like 20 years at this point. I was listening to them on the uh, way to the airport. Yeah. And I figure one of these days I'm going to get pulled over and I'm going to tell the police officers, like, do you realize how fast you're going? How fast? 90. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was listening to Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Chris Hughes says he got to, he went to see Willie Nelson. I saw Willie Nelson before. Oh, I'd Willie, like to see Willie Nelson. Oh, Willie was great. Yeah. Thank God the fans. It seems like Willie, at a Willie Nelson show, he just let anybody come up and play with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah, come on up. <laughs> Willie was amazing. <laughs> Real quick, I'll say, and, and me and Bess agree on this, the band that we saw that blew our minds with how good they were mm-hmm. was Tears for Fears. Because can, we didn't say yeah. it before we went, but mm-hmm. we really only knew Shout, um, Everybody, everybody Wants, wants to, rule. to Rule the World, and what's the other one? Head Over Heels. Head Over Heels. So their second song 
was mm-hmm. everyone wants to rule the world. And I thought that's got to be their uncle. Like, I yeah. literally what are you said, doing? what the <laughs> f- are you people doing? Yeah. What are you going to play for the rest of the night? Mm-hmm. And it, it was not a single bad song. Everything yeah. they did yeah. it wasn't as good as that, but it was close to it. Mm-hmm. And their final encore was a uh, shout. Yeah. You know? I was like, that was really, really good. Well, I'll tell you who else I was, I was blown away with was Garth Brooks. Okay. He comes yeah. out and he goes, listen, I'm not playing any new stuff. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, it's all hits tonight. Yeah. And he, I thought he was going to die <laughs> when he was standing there for his final bow, covered in sweat. Yeah. G- gasping for air. He took a bow uh-huh. and he had to have taken straight oxygen. Yeah. When he was uh, over with. But it was, that was an amazing. So, show. so yeah. in this thread, there were uh, lots of people. It was interesting because you would see, they didn't mention REM, but Soundgarden, mm-hmm. Alice in Chains, and Stone Temple Pilots were three bands where you would see someone say, this is the greatest concert I ever saw in my life was a sound garden of blah. And then a few posts later, you'd see somebody say the worst I ever saw was sound garden at some, some, something yeah. in Alice in Chains, same thing. And mm-hmm. I, I, it has to have something to do with just, I don't know their attitude yeah. or what they were expecting to see, but I've never on that thread mm-hmm. in concerts on the internet in person, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about Bruce Springsteen. A oh. Bruce Springsteen show. It's yeah. like no, Bruce Springsteen was amazing. Yeah, yeah. The only the only negative thing I've heard was a, was a guy that I used to work with said, "I went to a show and they didn't play any hits." I'm like, dude, did you was Bruce on the stage? <laughs> if Bruce is saying if, yeah. he's, if sound is coming from him, it's a hit. That's a person who only was around for Born in the USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're running over, but before we go, I wanted to mention one more thing. I don't remember the woman's name, but there is a woman. She's on Instagram or Facebook Reels, and she's got thousands of followers. And all she does is listen to jokes. That's all she. She's like walking around the house, and they're playing Jeff Foxworthy, and she's laughing right at Jeff yeah, Foxworthy's okay. joke. Yeah. And she has I don't know forty, fifty, yeah. some videos, no. uh, more, yeah. I'm just like pissed because mm. she's just listening to jokes. Yeah. That's and I'm like, how do you do that? How do you? I, I've got an idea. I, I, oh, here's a brilliant idea. I'm going to listen to a joke and then post the video of me smiling and laughing at a joke. Yeah. And I'm going to get and you and I, we are busting our ass yeah. trying to make content for this dog and pony little podcast <laughs> thing we got going on. <laughs> and she. Is just standing there. Sometimes she's wearing shorts. This dog and pony little thing we got sometimes, going on. Sometimes, yeah, the she's, title of this yeah, episode. Sometimes she's sitting on the couch. Sometimes, hey, hey, right. oh, on this video, she's wearing glasses. Okay, now you've yeah. triggered me. Okay, I'm like, I, I, d- 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 create something. Create some content. I have two things to say to you on this. Yeah. One is uh, I follow a drummer and I can't remember his name, but he's just amazing. He does Tommy like, Lee. No, no, no. Okay. It's it's somebody nobody you've ever oh, heard the, of. It's the, the groove, one-handed the, the, guy, that, the groove father. You groove father. Yeah. yeah, I follow him. Oh, oh my God! Oh. He'll do things that people can't do with multiple hands. He's just one-handed while he's drinking from a everybody a dance now. Yeah, the video for everybody yeah. dance now and by the, the groove it's father. The thing where he hits the thing and it flips and he yeah. hits it again. And then he, yeah. Okay. So there's Insane. another. Insane. He there's, is. In, he's amazing. Yeah. There's another channel where all it is is a guy who's sitting there going, who's watching him, watching him. Yeah. And then everyone goes, "Oh man, that's sick." Oh man, that's amazing. Yeah. And you look at the yeah. comments and like yeah. half the comments are like, what the f are you even doing? Yeah. You're just copying his video. Yeah. There's that. And then <laughs> it's just one that I actually got sucked into and now I, I feel um dirty. Dirty? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Reaction videos for people hearing a song for the first time. Now I like that. I do. The original one. Well, it, and it may not have been the original. It was the two uh, uh, African American boys. They're like fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Because when they listened to "In the Air Tonight" uh-huh. by Phil Collins, and they lost their mind. Yeah. Some of them are legitimate, but you can't tell. There's like videos of people in their sixties. You're telling and me you never watching... heard "Islands in the Stream" by Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. I mean, I'm, go screw yourself. There was one of this. The thumbnail was this uh, lady, and she had tears uh-huh. and it said, "Hearing," and it was like I don't know, in the air tonight for the first time. Uh-huh. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. You. you uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. The yeah. original. The guys... legitimate ones. I get it. 
Yeah, those and there's, are, the there's original so much... guys, because even Obama talked to them, and they had something. But after a while, I'm like, you really seriously I've haven't heard. heard any song. Yeah. Because they got like 40, 50 songs deep into this. I'm yeah. Like, You're pulling the skin over my nose. What? Yeah. What? That, yeah. Uh, that's. But yeah, I mean, there was, I've seen where people listen to Wish You Were Here for the first time. I was like, that's not the first time you've ever heard. Like people our age. Can't, can't, my God, I've never heard anything like this. Yes, you did. If and, you turned on a radio. Right. Or walked by a radio. And also, if you haven't heard any of these songs, you are a horrible person and you had horrible parents. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Do you know why I like Bob Dylan? Why? Because my mom listened to Bob Dylan okay. and I went through her albums and I found and that's why I like surf music cuz mom and dad had yeah. uh the the safaris, okay? okay? And I'm sitting there digging the, listening to these yeah. surf albums at age 4 or 5. There is one of a guy that's our age. Mm-hmm. Never listened to Stairway to Heaven. Oh, he's... Yeah. Because that's even a, a throwaway joke in Wayne's World. Remember mm-hmm. when they go into the guitar show? No Stairway. No stairway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Don't tell me you never you, listened to yeah. Stairway to Heaven. The, you, yeah. That always pissed me off when someone's like, oh, that was before my time. Come on. Yeah. Jesus. So were dinosaurs, but yeah. you know they exist, I know, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, I know of dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> They've got them at the airport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I know Bill Haley in the comments did Rock Around the Clock. Yeah. Right? That yeah. was in the damn 50s. I was born in 1970. Now I'm pissed. Yeah. 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 yeah I just, you, you triggered me, man. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm thinking of all these that I've seen. It just, it just, I just don't, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Uh, I should have remembered that woman's name. I think I might invite her on the show. Yeah. I mean, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite her to just listen to us. Yeah. And then what, and then what, she can just See if sit she here. She laughs. And, yeah, yeah. And she could just sit here and just uh, you should. G- guffaw. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're getting and, some and funny. She'll get like 3,000 likes. And we won't reviews, get views, And yeah. we'll get nothing. It'll be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Good. Maybe she'll be wearing a swimsuit. Maybe she'll be wearing shorts. Maybe yeah. she'll be wearing a, a robe. Yeah. Her hair might be unkempt. Yeah. Her hair may be combed. Who yeah. knows? Who, Who knows? knows what to expect with this Who chick? Knows? Yeah. She'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <sighs> Go to irritabledadsyndrome.com uh, if you want to hear more fantastic episodes like this one we had for you today. Um, <laughs> sometimes they end gracefully. Sometimes, sometimes they, they end don't. like Thumb and Louise. <laughs> right off With a cliff. cliff. <laughs> Boom. We'll see you next week. Irritable Dad Syndrome is a Mike Odell, Darren Cox production. Excuse me. <clears throat> a little too much pre-show soda. <laughs> 228 is an interesting mm-hmm. number. It's, How so? It's uh, 2, which is an even number. 2, which is another even number, mm-hmm. and is the second number in that series. And 8, which is an even number, and is 2 times 4, which is 2 times the number of 2s. <laughs> Math time with Mike again? Uh, you haven't no, done no, that no, in, in no. like 200 episodes. Uh, the email has to go up into space, to space and hit the yeah, satellite yeah. and then bounce back. I have no idea what the point of bringing this up was. <laughs> What's the point of anything we talk no, about? There's no point. This is flowing like glue coming out of a bottle. This is going beautifully. Yeah. yeah.